Hello class, this is Mrs. Politsky, and I've got notes for Economics, Chapter 5, Section, section 3, Cost, Revenue, and Profit Maximization. As we go along, you're going to need your sheet, and you're going to just fill in the blanks. But as we go, I may have uh, a few little things that I want to talk about as far as a few diagrams within your textbook. So you may want to have your textbook handy, and you're going to need roughly pages 132 through 137. So as we go along, follow along. So here we go. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, measures of cost and how that kind of plays out. And I'm just going to kind of read along here and kind of fill in the blanks for you. But as we go, I've got a few other additional things that I want to mention. So take a look. Cost can be divided into several categories. First we have uh, what is known as fixed cost. These are the costs that an organization incurs even if there is little to no activity. Okay, a fixed cost could be paying a mortgage or paying uh, perhaps your um, utility bills such as your uh, electricity or your water bills or such. Nevertheless, uh, the total of these unchanging costs become known as fixed cost or overhead. And probably overhead is kind of the term that we use quite a bit uh, within the business world because they kind of remain the same over time and you can kind of almost budget for those things. All right. On the other hand, you have some expenses that do change. And as a result of that, um, this could be such as labor or raw materials. Uh, we know that with labor cost, you know, you have new laws like new minimum wage laws. This kind of lends itself to what is known as a variable cost. Okay. And you can't really depend on them, you know, being the same from year to year, though uh, you can somewhat project them. I mean, there are mathematical formulas that you can utilize uh, to kind of set these aside. So that way you're not uh, running into huge problems as far as these debts. So anyway. So we have uh, the sum of these two costs, and these two costs are known as total cost. Another category of cost is what we call marginal cost. These are the extra costs that are incurred when a business produces one additional unit of a product. So if a company is trying to, um, to expand what they're doing, uh, this may lend itself to the fact that they're going to have to budget to produce more. So as a way to kind of show you some of this, I'm going to flip my screen here to the diagram that's in your textbook for um, figure chapter 5, section 6, the production cost and revenues. And as we're looking at this, I'm, I'm just going to kind of mention a few little things here. Um, we had mentioned before, um, you know, with the issues of like uh, your overhead, these could be like salaries, it could be rent payments, lease payments, taxes, depreciation, things of that sort. Um, along with that, you know, I mentioned before we had some of the variable costs as far as like raw materials. Um, but, you know, if you'd ever have to have like a layoff or, um, have workers work overtime. I mean, those are some things that may vary from time to time. When we talk about the total cost, and if you kind of look towards the middle, yeah, right over here in the middle of our uh, column here, you know, we know that, you know, the sum of all uh, fixed cost and variable cost is our total cost. And you could take, you know, different stages of production here. So we got like stage one, stage two, stage three. Okay, so I could have my workers that are working for me. You know, at, at different stages of production, we're going to have some different cost. Okay, so I want to take a look here at the beginning of stage two. We've got about six workers. Um, they're working together. Okay, uh, these workers might be costing $90 to produce maybe 110 units. Um, if I would take those numbers and multiply, you know, the workers and how much it's costing to produce those units, it may cost me about $590, okay? And then there's also a sum of about $50, perhaps in fixed cost, uh, plus maybe, 
you know, about $540 in variable costs. You know, it kind of adds up. And so the question would be, you know, would it be worth, you know, keeping that six worker for and laying, you know, or laying them off and maybe going back down to five? You know, at some point in time, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at these costs. And the marginal costs here are, are pretty slim, you know, when we look from worker four all the way to about worker seven. But as we keep increasing, um, the question is, is this going to be worth it? You know, and money, and and certainly, uh, these are the things that people who are in areas of management are looking at, as far as ways to kind of, uh, you know, kind of keep their cost in in hand. So we're going to kind of go back here and talk about applying some of these cost principles. And as we go along here, you know, you fill in what you need. Um, taking a look here. An entrepreneur engaged in what is known as e-commerce or electronic business or the exchange conducted over the internet is an example of a business that has very low overhead. Uh, in many cases, they don't need to buy um, or rent uh, additional property. Uh, in many cases, uh, many people who start off in e-commerce, they're doing a lot of this out of their own personal space out of a garage or a basement uh, that they already own or maybe even their parents garage or basement. Nevertheless, they can keep costs really low. Okay. And when a business analyzes its cost, uh, it can find a level of production where it can generate just enough revenue to cover its total operating cost. This is known as the break even point. Okay, if we get beyond that break even point, we're actually making some money here. So we're going to go back to this chart that we were looking at. And I believe this is on page 134 uh, in your textbook. Okay, so, you know, when we talk about, you know, some of the units that are being produced, okay, we got our, our number of workers and such. Um, you know, uh, the point where 7 and 20 units of total product. Uh, where you have two workers that would be needed to be hired uh, to get that break-even point. Okay, uh, this number only tells the firm how much it has to produce to cover its cost. Most businesses want to do more business, and they want to make um, the amount of profits that they can, um, you know, not only just cover their costs, but they can perhaps maybe, you know, make some money uh, to profit a little bit. Okay, we're going to continue here and talk about the analysis, uh, marginal analysis and profit maximization. So as we're going along, uh, fill in your information that you would need here. Uh, businesses use two key measures of revenue to find the amount of output that produces the greatest amount of profit. And this is known as... Uh, total revenue. Okay, this is all the revenue that a business receives. Uh, even more important is what we would call marginal revenue. Okay, which is the extra revenue associated with the production and sale of one additional unit of output. Economists use um, what is called marginal analysis, and this is a type of decision making that compares to extra benefits to the extra cost of taking an action. Businesses want to know how to generate the maximum profit, and they can do so by comparing uh, the extra expenses, or AKA um, your marginal cost, move that right over there, and the extra benefits, uh, which would be your marginal revenue. And eventually, you know, profit maximizing quantity of output is reached. And the benefit and the cost, hopefully, will eventually equal out. So, taking a look here at our chart again. Um, you know, you look at that, that sixth worker here, okay? Um, you know, because of their extra output, they would cost uh, only $4.50 to produce uh, while generating about $15 in revenue. So you can see kind of the revenue amount right there. Okay. Um, 
nevertheless, you know, we go down here to about our ninth worker, and you can kind of see where this red box is. Uh, the ninth worker neither adds or takes away from the total profit. The firm would have no incentive to hire a tenth worker. Uh, it would cause the profits to go down. So eventually, by looking at that, we've got the, the profit maximizing quantity of output. And this is the level of production where those marginal costs are equal to the marginal revenue. All right. Well, thank you so much. You got a reading review to do.